come back up. So it's, it's uh, you know, you would think that we would uh, be privy to that, but uh, the, it seems the mainstream isn't awake to that scenario, but uh, the government definitely is because they're building mass facilities for the elite in their own little groups there. But, uh, uh, you know, that's pretty much always been the case. They pretty much take care of themselves and, and forget about the very people that, you know, put them in power. Uh, you know, I, I'm wondering if that happened in the past. I, I, I would hope not. I would hope that they built these facilities for everyone and not just the elite. They are really huge, those systems. Mm -hmm. And you can find them really everywhere, even in Easter Island, in the mm -hmm. Pacific, everywhere. Yeah, Very anywhere. Strange. They must have known something. Definitely, yeah. Any, just about anywhere, uh, these cataclysms, especially if you're on an island, you would think you would have some kind of a of a shelter, you know, just with the hurricanes and the you know cyclones and things like that going on there. But uh, yeah. uh, you know, obviously they they had some probably ways of knowing when it was coming, or or uh, I even think they had ways of actually subduing them or or moving them, you know, away from them. Yeah, but who who were they? That's always the big question, Chen. <laughs> yeah. Who were they? Well, you and, know the. Uh, yes. Yeah? Oh, go ahead. Well, the only thing that makes sense to me is is if the first thing is, A, they were extremely advanced beings. They had technologies beyond ours and knowledge and wisdom beyond ours. I mean, that everything is pointing in that direction. The, the second one I would, I would say is a, a very strong possibility is that they may have come here. They didn't evolve, you know, as the knuckle dragger that, that people are trying to say. There's no missing link. Uh, so, so somebody has been here with extreme knowledge, you know, extreme technology, uh, back, I guess Cremo said, is back at 600 million years. I mean, way in, the, in ancient history. So somebody had some pretty extreme knowledge uh, uh, and technology all the way back then. So the, to me, the Earth is, ha, has been seeded not on just one occasion, but on several occasions, and then it went through its, its uh, cyclic cataclysm program, and then, you know, then everybody had to start over again. So it's probably just many groups that have come here, many different star nations, which fits into the ancient uh, lore, you know, a lot of the ancient stories, especially the Native Americans all, all know about that. Oh, yeah. Not only the, the, in, uh, the Native Americans, all over the world, the old civilizations, they have their stories, they have their myths and uh, legends. And I think in all of the, of the legends, there is so much reality. Take, for example, the giants. You find the stories about the giants all over the world, in every continent, in every country. And we found already several bones from giants, and uh, we have photos of 2.6-meter giants from Ecuador. I got uh, bones with me for research uh, from a 7 point six meter giant which means around twenty feet. Wow. These were not only legions because uh, Tiesa de Leon, a Spanish, half Spanish, half uh, Inca, he wrote already in the second uh, half of the sixteenth century, he wrote, We found at the coast of Esmeraldas several human skeletons. They were five times taller than we were. And if you calculate the, the people at that time had about 1.5 meter, five times, so you are exactly on the size of 7.5 meters. Mm -hmm. They existed, because if then the question is coming, how could they uh, uh, survive, because they are too big for surviving on Earth, uh, the question is, uh, did the Earth have another gravity mm -hmm. at, the, at, the, at these times, and why the dinosaurs could get so big and everything? Mm -hmm. Well, it seems like if you were that big, uh, you know, it depends on where you evolved. You know, if you evolved on another planet with, uh, uh, you know, I could see how that could happen. And, you know, maybe they were much stronger or they had a thicker skeletal system or, or adapted, you know, to a whole different environment, maybe a larger planet, and then, and then came here. But the, the possibilities are, are there's so many different theories you could throw into that. 
but definitely the giants have been here. You know, they're all throughout the Bible, throughout other texts, talk about them. Native Americans have their stories about the giants. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it, I have no doubt that they existed. Now, you know, getting into the giants, I know you have, uh, you've had access to some of these uh, skulls that were definitely uh, different than, than the basic human skulls. Uh, would you like to talk a little bit about those? Yes, sure. Uh, we found in uh, Peru several, we saw several so-called deformed uh, skulls, but especially in Ica, uh, there is a small museum called Maria Reiche Museum. Maria Reiche was a German researcher. She, she did researches on the Nazca lines for several, uh, I think, 40 years. And they built a small museum and called the museum on her name. And in this museum, I saw the most incredible skulls I ever saw. They are so big that usually I talked with many experts here in Austria, and they said it's quite impossible that through deformation you get the double material on bone on your skull. And some of the skulls are really straight up, but much higher than a normal human skull. Mm -hmm. Very strange. And we call them the cone heads. The cone heads, but, but some of them are more than, not even cone heads. They are very high going up. And on one of them, I remember, and I have photos, there are still hairs on the top of the skull. Mm -hmm. uh, and also cone heads. And uh, mm -hmm. another very interesting uh, photos and uh, information I got from uh, Bolivia about uh, 2.6 meter skeletons with also uh, like a cone head. But uh, comparing to Homo sapiens, to us, we have on, on the top of our skull, we have three bone plates. Uh, those Bolivian skulls, they are really looking like an egg. They don't have uh, bone plates on top of the skull. That means they cannot be Homo sapiens, definitely not, and also not Neanderthals. So that means there must have been existed, uh, there must have existed other human races also in the past. Now that means like the parietal bones were missing. So, so basically their, uh, their brain seemed to be like fully connected. There was no division, no separation uh, in their brains, which uh, would be amazing. You know, if you thought about somebody with a, a brain that was of that size, that was fully active, that there's no divisions in it, uh, what they could do, uh, they'd probably have you know, all kinds of telekinesis abilities, telepathy, uh, you know, they, they would probably be revered as God. Uh, that's, that's why, um, this is the question, why did uh, so many uh, civilizations, not only in South America, but also in Asia, even in Africa, deform their baby's head? Why did they do it? Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe that's what many researchers are saying. They they wanted to look like the gods. Mm -hmm. yeah, I again, legions, stories, but how much reality is behind it? And uh, we know in in Bolivia, uh, we have information where are, uh, where there are some of those skeletons. And if I have the chance to see them, I try to get one or two bones uh, with me for DNA analysis, and of course, I would make a film and uh, photographing the skulls uh, from every side, so that uh, we might get further informations later on. Have they have they done any? Uh, I know they've refused to allow any DNA testing on some of these bones. Uh, in South America, those skulls are behind uh, the, the in the museum behind the glass cases, and I do not think that we might uh, be allowed to take DNA uh, samples. Mm -hmm. We were only one day in uh, half day in the museum, so it was Sunday, and no director was there. Otherwise, I would have asked, but uh, the chance I think uh, would be very very little. Yeah, I've heard other people have tried, you know, to get uh, DNA samples, and they've been refused. Uh, I, I know the churches have a lot of <laughs> say so in some of these things, and they don't want the the uh, evidence out there that there are extremely advanced non-human beings out there. 
So they, they might be... Oh, 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 uh, James, but uh, there, there is, even in the Vatican now, already there are some priests uh, officially announced that uh, there's a high possibility that there is uh, other life in, in the universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's Balducci or something. There's several of them. There's an astronomer, too, there that's saying if they do come, that he would be happy to baptize them. <laughs> <laughs> so, I thought that's kind of funny. Here, here's these beings coming that are probably thousands, you know, millions, could be billions of years older than us, and these guys are going to baptize them. <laughs> so, uh, I, I think that, but, you know, they, uh, uh, one of the guys in the Vatican said that, you know, they didn't need to be baptized because they, they did not have the original sin. You know, they didn't eat the apple. So they didn't really need baptism, and and then uh, there's a couple other stories coming out of the bat, out of the Vatican now that that are saying that uh, they're not to be demonized. You know, there are uh, it just leads to more, you know, the more vastness of God's creation. So they they are taking a positive approach to this finally, and and uh, uh, I know even Billy Graham over here, which is more of a you know Christian fundamentalist. Uh, he he calls them God's other angels, and and yeah. so you know you know now the uh, the mainstream religions are actually opening up to this, and uh, you know that most scientists now have are opening up to this after the evidence after you do any real research in this, but you still have the the old guard, you know the the mainstream status quo, keep everything the same, you know, don't rock the boat program. Uh, you know, and, and aligned with government or funded by the government that are, are still suppressing this information. Mm. No, I personally, I have to say I believe in God. Mm-hmm. Uh, not everything what the religion did in the past, uh, which one ever, even in our days, some of uh, religions are not doing very good things. Uh, always, if something is uh, going into fundamental, it's not really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, believing for people is good. I think it it helps many people in hard time and so on. Mm-hmm. So there must be something out there, and I call it God. Others, uh, other calls it other things. But even mm-hmm. scientists in our days, uh, they say uh, it is so perfect. Then uh, there must be something. I don't oh, know I, what I, you think. Oh, I agree 100%. I, I, if you just look at nature and the complexity and how it all came together, I just don't see any way possible that could be done through, you know, random mutation. That doesn't doesn't add up. And uh, uh, I think any scientist. I, now I know people that worked on the genome experiments and everything else, and they're they're brilliant. You know, one guy has like nine PhDs. And uh, he's a biophysicist, and and they all believe in 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 a supreme intelligence, whatever you some kind of creative intelligence, you know, that the cosmic glue keeping everything together. Uh, but you know, they don't believe in you know. I've always felt the bearded god, the image of the bearded god, that we actually got that from the Anunnaki, and uh, and then I always ask, well, who created them? <laughs> you know, who created the Anunnaki? So, uh, uh, the Mayas uh, talking about Quetzalcoatl mm-hmm. or Kukulkan or Viracocha in Peru. Uh, always, uh, it's a different name, but uh, yeah. But always, no, no, no matter how this uh, god for them was called, this god was always for peace, 